fits hot in here. Hello art friends, my name is Anusha Said and I'm a children's book author and illustrator and today I want to share with you guys my process and how I illustrated this book cover. This is a middle grade book called Golden Girl. It was written by Reem Faruqi and it was published by HarperCollins earlier this year in February. Although I'm mostly a picture book illustrator, um, it's pretty great that I get to work on a lot of book covers for middle grade and young adult like these ones. And working on Golden Girl was such a delight and I'm really happy with how the cover came out. I have previously made other videos in the past talking about my book cover process, which you can watch here and here. And I've made a bunch of other videos talking about my picture book process if you're more interested in that. So you guys know the drill. As always, in this video, I'm going to be going over how I got this job offer, working on this uh, book cover, what the schedule was like, what it's like working with the publisher, uh, planning the concepts and the character design, my process in sketching and painting, uh, dealing with all of the revisions, and so on. So if you want to skip ahead to something that's more interesting to you, I included all of the timestamps below. And and if you enjoy this video, uh, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I post tons and tons of helpful videos on what it's like being a children's book author and illustrator, as well as the business side of the job. So things like contracts, pricing your work and negotiation, and all of those big important things that your art school never taught you. Well, with that out of the way, let's go. So to summarize the book, uh, Golden Girl tells the story of a kleptomaniac, oh, no, kleptomaniac middle school girl called Afia, whose dad has been falsely accused of a crime that he didn't do and he is being held in custody when their family is traveling back to the US from Pakistan. Back home in the US, she tries to come up with a plan to save her dad, but it might have to involve her little bad habit of stealing pretty things. So I thought that this was a really great book, uh, written in verse, it's very poetic, and I love that we have this complicated and imperfect girl for our main character. Um, as always, it's also has been really fun for me to work on a book with a Pakistani Muslim female character since, you know, that's what I am and I love seeing my culture represented in the books today and it's also cool seeing uh, different multitudes, different types of personalities, so someone who is not that perfect. Okay, let's talk about how I got this job. So in the past, I have mentioned that sometimes I will get a book project because the art director had seen my work through um, social media or from a very specific event or a gallery show like Lightbox Expo or Gallery Nucleus. In this case, most likely, the HarperCollins team had just seen my portfolio either because I had worked with them on other books in the past because they are a frequent client or because the book features a South Asian character and I have done a lot of books with South Asian characters and so I have those examples in my portfolio and uh, they thought I would be a good fit. So Molly Fair was the art director who reached out to my agent and let her know that she was working on the book Golden Girl. And she thought that I would be a good fit for the cover and wanted to know if I was available and interested. In the intro email, um, I've mentioned before that my agent will do all of the initial contact talking with the publisher before I get brought in. Uh, so in the intro email, publishers will vary in like how much information they will share in that first contact. Uh, some publishers will be a little bit vague and only mention that they have a possible project and they want to know about the artist's availability first before talking further um, and their budget and things like that. And then some art directors and publishers will share all of the details up front, which is what Molly had done in this book situation. So in her email, she sent over her planned schedule, a summary of the book, the budget she had in mind, and a detailed packet of information. In this packet of information, uh, she included the full manuscript of the book that I could read over, um, a detailed description of the main character, Afia, and then some ideas that the team had in mind for the cover, um, as well as some thoughts from the author herself, which I'll share later on in the video. Me and my agent, we discussed the project and whether I should take it on. I have mentioned before that I'm kind of trying to avoid taking on too many South Asian themed stories just because it does feel like I'm being typecast and I want to avoid being pigeonholed into a specific genre. However, after reading the manuscript, I just really loved it and really connected with the story and the character a lot. And so I decided to take it on. My agent contacted Molly and she let her know that I was interested in working on this book 
but um, that the original budget that they had planned was a little bit lower than what I would usually see for a book cover fee and my agent asked if they were able to bring it up a little bit higher because I had decided that I would only take on this project if they were able to meet my usual rate. Thankfully, they were able to increase the fee to what I had wanted with the provision that I would also do a back cover as well since initially they had only wanted me to do a front cover but because the back cover concept is usually quite minimal compared to the front and less of a workload I thought that this was a fair compromise and I agreed to the terms. Um, I believe there were a couple of other small things that my agent wanted to change in the contract as well so um, her and the publisher kind of went back and forth until the new contract was finalized and we signed it and then I finally made my first contact with the publisher and then it was time to work. All right, let's go over the schedule and do a little bit of math. So I was first contacted by HarperCollins on November 6, 2020, where my future art director contacted my agent with the proposal for the book. Like I said, me and my agent discussed the proposal, uh, negotiated the contract and the fee, and once that was all finalized, I had my first contact with the art director on November 16th, uh, 10 days later. The team had asked for the initial sketches to be delivered on December 15th, giving me one full month to work on them. Initially, they asked for final art to be delivered on February 1st, so about a month and a half of work. However, this ended up being a pretty relaxed schedule for the project because we ended up having quite a few revisions and changes during the process and so the date kept getting pushed back and back. So instead of final art, my sketch revisions and color concepts were due on February 1st using the feedback I got at the beginning of January. After a series of back and forth with tiny little tweaks, I was able to hand in the absolute final art on April 16th, so about five months in total on this book cover. However, a little while later, after I had wrapped up, the publisher got in touch and asked if I would be able to create a few small uh, black and white illustrations that would be used for the beginning of each chapter in the interior. I did have other projects taking up my time, but because this was such a small assignment, I said yes and I got to work, and then this particular timeline for the interior art was pretty quick. I got the request on June 2nd, it was due on June 22nd, so 20 days for five little spots, easy peasy, and then I was done. So, little sidebar, I don't know if anyone's actually interested in like the scheduling part of my videos, but I think personally, it is kind of helpful knowing how long illustrators are given to work on a project, especially since this can change depending on so many different factors. For example, for most of my early career, I would be given like three months to work on a full 32 page picture book. And at that time, I had no idea that that was like a really short and pretty unreasonable amount of time. And it wasn't until later on, I would get projects that gave me 12 months for the same amount of work. And isn't that crazy? Um, ideally, you should be getting a full year to work on a book, but you know, things like quick turnarounds, delayed schedules, exploitation can unfortunately get in the way. But I think it's important to share this kind of information so that artists can try to negotiate for more fair hours and just have an understanding on like what typical schedules are like anyway. Reference. So before we get started on the actual drawing part of the job, I know this is getting kind of long, I'll get there eventually, I had some research and preparation to do first. As mentioned before, the art director and the author already had some possible concepts that they thought would be great for the cover, and personally, I have always found it really helpful to have a little bit of a starting point to go off of instead of like a completely blue sky approach, and I appreciate having some guidance at the beginning. I was also able to read through the whole manuscript to see if I could pull up any details from the story that would be interesting to incorporate into the cover because it's always nice to have some foreshadowing elements as a little sneak peek to what the reader will expect from the book. These are the initial thoughts that the art director shared with me in that intro packet. As far as cover ideas go, the team is looking to focus on our main character Afia who suffers from kleptomania and jewelry which Afia is very drawn to. One idea the author had was to see a portrait of Afia from the lips down and to focus on her wearing Pakistani jewelry. We also thought that an alternate version of the same idea, only seeing Afia's full space, would be a good comparison to consider as well. We are also open to any ideas you may have. I also got some ideas from the author who sent over a couple of inspiration photos, which I'm sorry I won't share over here because they did include personal photos of her family members, but basically she had sent over this 
gorgeous vintage photo of her grandmother. It's um, black and white and it's not showing her eyes. It's just like her lower face, like her mouth, as well as details of her jewelry and outfit. And then also she sent a bunch of examples of um, really heavy traditional Pakistani gold jewelry and wedding style outfits. An image that popped in my head when I was first reading this book with the suggested title Golden Girl is a girl's face from the lips down to neck up with jewelry. This is my grandmother's photo below, but a zoom in on the girl's lips and earrings and neck with jewelry around it and maybe a red shawl rakamis. The focus would be on the jewelry, the eyes wouldn't show. And then lastly, I was also sent over character descriptions for our main character Afia as well as her best friend. So um, this character description is the author's direct description uh, that was given by her, but they also included some descriptions that are pulled from the book itself, like quotes. Sometimes when I'm working on a cover, I don't really get any descriptions on what the main character looks like, uh, especially if like sometimes the book is also vague in what the character looks like, um, so that the reader can kind of like imagine on their own. And then I have full reign to draw whatever I want which can be really fun because I'm also a character designer. But in this case, I had more specific direction, but I also think that's great because I really want to recreate the author's vision as closely as possible because I really respect their work and I want to see it through to life. Afia Kamar is the main character in Pakistani American. She's a seventh grader that struggles with a terrible secret. She is a thief and she often steals from her best friend. She loves National Geographic's weird but true facts. She is on the tennis team, she is caring and babysits her two-year-old brother, Ibrahim. She has mild hearing loss. Reference for Afia physical description. I wasn't always pretty. My nose too big like a samosa. My cheeks too round like a lot of But then I turned 13 and the auntie stopped squeezing my cheeks. My face grew to match my nose. My cheekbones sucked up the baby fat. And even though people still call me cute, they're wrong. You'll note that the publisher included the page numbers that indicate where that description is in the book. Uh, this is always very helpful to have that written out beforehand so you don't waste too much time and you have all of that information ready for you to go. All right, let's get to work on the art. The first round of sketches were due on December 15th, giving me about a month to come up with my initial concepts. For the first round, I typically like to send between three to five different ideas to the publisher. Though in this case, I only sent three because I thought that the concept that they had in mind was quite simple. Because I was doing a wrap cover, meaning like the front and back cover, um, I was working in the following dimensions. So without bleed, it would be 12.25 by 8.5 inches. And then you would, if you were including bleed, it would be 0.375 on the left and right and 0.25 on the top and bottom. I get a lot of people asking me what dimensions I work on for my books. And while I understand that it can be useful information, I would also stress that my dimensions change for every project because it totally depends on the type of book that I'm working on. And it's not really a one size fits all approach. If you're working in traditional publishing, your art director will let you know what size to work in. And if you're self-publishing, you would need to check in with what your printer's requirements are because most likely they are not going to be the same as what I'm working in and I don't want you to be printing something that's totally the wrong size. So here are the three concept sketches that I came up with. My initial sketches are always pretty rough, although I'll sometimes add a bit of tone for depth and in this case, goal to highlight the jewelry and title. You'll see they all play upon the same theme uh, because the book is about a kleptomaniac who likes stealing jewelry and her father has been arrested. I wanted to see if I could come those elements together. Um, so bangles are a big part of the theming in this book. It's a big part of Baksani jewelry. So I became really fixated on the idea of having gold bangles as like a metaphor for handcuffs and how interesting that contrast could be between luxury versus something like crime. So in this first image, I have Afia's full face showing with her hands cupped in front of her and I tried to make her look shocked and guilty in her pose and expressions uh, like she's just been caught. So I really like how I drew her face in this concept and you'll see that it's much more juvenile and a lot younger and innocent as compared to the other concepts that I sent over. Um, for the second one, this one is a lot more subtle and I followed the author's request of not showing the eyes over here. Uh, the pose in this is also more discreet where uh, it feels like she's glammed up and she's showing off her jewels. Um, but because she's not smiling, it also appears like she might be hiding something or at least that's my interpretation. Um, here I place the book title right in the middle of the page. 
And third concept, finally, this is a full body pose of the main character with her back turned but her face towards us. Um, I kept the background empty over here because I was thinking of doing a intricate pattern around her, but at this stage of the book cover process, um, I just wanted to play around with the posing and not focus on the details too much. Um, this was the most on the nose of all three covers, which is very clearly, you know, the strongest metaphor. In this case, I didn't use the subtle bangles as handcuffs, but a corded necklace, which is pretty typical in Baksani jewelry as well. Looking back, I think this cover might have been a little bit too dark for the middle grade cover, especially since her expression isn't as happy here as well. But I did want to give this option to the publishers because I thought it could be cool and I like the pose. For the back cover, I kept it pretty simple. Uh, we would have the blurb in the middle and I created a frame around it that is filled with all of the different objects in the book that our main character steals throughout it. Um, I thought it would be a great detail that the readers could pick up on um, and foreshadow too. So this includes things like necklaces and bangles, but also other knickknacks like eyeshadow, a prism, and a pencil sharpener. So after submitting my sketches, these were the notes that I got back from my author and art director. Could the expressions on all three sketches look a little happier? We don't want the cover to look super serious. Shoulder length hair was preferred by the author, could you please adjust? The imagery of her bracelets as handcuffs was a clever and interesting way to tie in the storyline, but the author and editor thought it might be too much for the cover. Please remove the connections on all three sketches. To keep the character looking younger, the author asked to remove the nose ring on number two and the eyeliner on number three. The team loves your cover for other words for home. Could you possibly try adding a subtle texture or pattern to the backgrounds? The author likes the simple box on the clothing you did. If you're already thinking about color, she suggested trying red colored outfits, could be Baksani or American, as that would tie into Afia's red shoulder kameez she had growing up. The author also wanted to hint at her interests like tennis and photography. The team thought that an easy way to do this would be on the back cover, to replace a few of that jewelry with a tennis racket, sports jewelry, or camera. We're open to your ideas too if you had any. Let me know what you think. 
The team was a little torn over all three options and they couldn't decide on the final one just yet. And so they asked if I could do all of their requested tweaks first and play around with the color options before they make their final decision. Normally, I would want a firm confirmation on the sketch direction before getting started on the color. The color exploration would be dependent on what idea we go with since that would affect the mood and location. And so normally in most projects that I work on, I would submit three color options for this type of round. However, um, because these three covers were pretty similar in concept anyway, I did feel like whatever color palette we chose could probably be applied to all three of the concepts and also speed up the whole process because we were running a little bit slow on time. So instead of creating three color options for each of the concepts, uh, which would equal to nine options in total and be way too much work for myself, I could just do one different color option for each sketch with the understanding that we could mix and match the palettes around. So here you'll see that I made the tweaks to all three covers, namely getting rid of the handcuff imagery and making all the expressions happier. Um, let's go over the covers one by one. Number one, um, I wanted a lot of focus on the gold jewelry. So in contrast, I kept the palette pretty muted so that the gold could really pop off. The author wanted a red chemise shirt, so I made sure to include that in all of the designs, though in this design, the red is quite warm toned and I had a lovely teal as the accent color. I wanted this cover to be really sparkly, so I added lots of glitter, stars in the jewelry, as well as the background. Um, I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to get gold foil detail on the cover, but for this cover concept, I did envision having the background stars be made of foil. Number two, this is more of a cool toned red shirt, almost a magenta. If the first option was more mature and neutral, I wanted this option to be very feminine with lots of florals and pinks. I didn't want to focus on the background pattern too heavily at this stage, especially if we weren't going forward with this design. But you can kind of see what I'm going for. Something very much inspired by South Asian patterns and all very lovely pastel and girly. And finally, a very glam option. This one is giving jungle tropical vibes with jewel tones and deep colors. The other background colors are quite soft. Uh, so for this option, I did want it to be quite deep and bright with a stunning marigold yellow for the back and lush greenery all around our character. Uh, this is also the only cover option where henna, uh, since there's so much focus on her hands over here. I didn't share color concepts for the back cover at this point, since that would be dependent on what direction we go with with the front cover. And in any case, it's not really urgent at this point because we're just focusing on the front. However, I did send over the revision that included the tennis racket that they asked for. After submitting my concepts, I waited for the feedback. It's normal to wait for a month or more for picture books uh, because there are a lot of pages to go through, but it can take just as long for a simple assignment like a cover as well. In this case, I waited a month for feedback because the art director needed to share the concept with the author as well as sales and marketing teams. The team had decided on this cover concept, but with a few adjustments. They really liked the beige starry background from cover one and also wanted me to give her a closed smile. My art director sent over this rough concept of what she was going for, as well as the placement of the title. Sometimes I get to design the cover title, especially if we were going for a more illustrated look, but as you can see, the title was designed in-house for this one. So now we get to work on painting. Um, because I already had my colors planned out, Painting was pretty simple since I mostly color picked my way through the whole process. As always, I'm mostly using the default Procreate 6B pencil brush over here um, and also using Procreate on my iPad. That's uh, where I do most of my work these days and I absolutely love it.
At this point, the cover was almost good to go, but we just had to go back and forth a little bit until we got it just right. I was asked to reduce the amount of makeup, make her skin less red, and we kind of went back and forth on whether her mouth should be opened or closed. As I mentioned, a few months after I submitted my final cover art, my art director came back to me and asked if I had some time to illustrate a few interior spot illustrations. They had ended up pulling a couple of back cover objects to use for the beginning of each chapter, and they wanted to see if I could illustrate five more. This was a really easy task, especially since these were going to be quite small and in black and white only. These were the objects they asked me to illustrate, and keeping in mind that I didn't draw anything copyrighted. And here you can see my process for illustrating all of them, starting with a pretty rough sketch and using reference when needed, and then going straight to final art. Part 3. Gut Candy Twizzlers, Airheads, Rainbow Bears, or anything that is sweet, gummy, and chewy. Part 5. Hair A barrette? Or even a ponytail rubber band holder. Part 6. Tongue Spicy food like a kebab roll or balach ice cream. Part 10. Bladder One can of Coke, a water bottle, or orange soda. Part 11. Mouth, lipstick, or gum wrappers. And that's it! That was the process of illustrating this book cover. I think overall it came out really nicely. I absolutely love seeing it in my hands and I hope that you get a chance to pick it up because I thought that the story itself is also a really great read. If you like this video, as I said before, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I post tons and tons of videos on art education, what my life is like as a children's book illustrator, and as I said, uh, the business side of art as well, so things like contract negotiation, pricing, and so on. You can find me on all my social medias. I'm at foxville underscore art, and I also have a book coming out in July. If you haven't pre-ordered that already, that's called That's Not My Name. And what else? Um, I'm going to be at TCAF in June, uh, June 18th and 19th, I believe. So if you're in the Toronto area, please check that out. Come say hi. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know below. Otherwise. See you later.